Welcome to my talk about hunting for a mage card. Today I'll first introduce myself, then I'll talk about what mage card is, and a bit about the different skimmers that there are, how to track campaigns and the results of the campaigns that I tracked, and then I want to talk a bit about the economic implications that there are to all involved parties, and I want to talk about the indirect collaboration I had with several people around the world that made this research partially possible. So first of who am I? Well, my name is Max Kerste. I go by the nickname of Libra, and on Twitter I use the handle Libra Analysis. In January 2019, I graduated cum laude from my bachelor, and in the meantime, I worked as a malware analyst for Android malware at a company called Threat Fabric. In my spare time, I write blogs for my own website. Uh, most of them are dedicated to reverse engineering and are added to my binary analysis course. This is a free course that uh, analyzes malware step by step uh, using free and open source tooling. I publish my own tools at my GitHub profile, one of which is Android Project Creator, and I gave a talk at the conference conference uh, about this tool. Last year, I also gave a workshop at uh, BotConf 2019, and this was about uh, how to statically analyze Android malware. Currently, I work for ABN AMRO, which is a bank within the Netherlands, and uh, I'm in the threat intelligence team there. So the goal of this team is to focus on outside threats uh, and thereby increase the security of the bank. Uh, but we also do research in quite a lot of topics and we aim to give back to the community as well. As we use things from the community, we want to participate as well. Uh, so an example could be this talk uh, or it could be giving a lecture at a university or high school. So digging into the actual topic of the talk itself, uh, what is MageCard? So MageCard is a collective term for credit card stealers, uh, and I mean digital ones in this sense. So the name comes from the Magento e-commerce platform, uh, which is a known platform to host your own web shop with. And MageCard has become more of a household term at this point because the InfoSec community writes about credit card stealers uh, generally as MageCard. Now, uh, some of the actors that are infecting websites with these skimmers target only really old ones, uh, or they wait until a good opportunity arises, like the card lead that has been discovered by Sunsec, uh, where the Magento 1 uh, platform was end of life and didn't receive any updates anymore. Uh, and then they struck infecting over 3% of all Magento 1 websites that Sunsec knows of. Uh, in other cases, it might be just be a bit too late to install a, a recent update uh, or having a misconfigured part on your website somewhere else. So MageCard skimmers uh, have different versions, and I put versions in between quotes because you can also have a really different skimmer. Uh, it's not like it's one family with small adaptations. There can be actually really different scripts out there as well. So the group that I'm focusing on in this research is MageCard group 12, as identified by RiskIQ in our original report. Um, I think it's good to use an analogy to explain how MageCard skimmers work because uh, it's, it's quite hard, and it was actually one of the problems I had when creating this talk, it's quite hard to visualize this uh, without taking too much time. So the easiest way to explain this is with an analogy. Uh, let's say you order a t-shirt online, and then you are awaiting a physical item which you've paid for. So you went to the web shop, you selected the t-shirt you wanted, you filled in your credentials and your uh, location, your first name, last name, etc. You paid the money, the web shop receives the money and you get the t-shirt. That's the normal transaction. Now in case of physically stealing something, the t-shirt would never arrive or it would be stolen from your front door. However, the digital world works differently because I can copy these details during the transaction, which is exactly what the skimmer does, but then your payment still goes through, company receives the money, you get the shirt, nobody is aware that anything went wrong, aside from the criminal, from whose perspective, perspective it went uh, correct in that case. Now, maybe a few months later, uh, you will see that you have weird transactions on your credit card, and you're losing money in thousands and thousands per day. So you contact your credit card uh, holder and you ask, what's up, how is this possible, because I didn't make these transactions. And then you find out you've been skimmed. So it doesn't take anything away, um, and that is the easiest way to compare that with is you are going to a festival. Now at the festival you obviously want to buy some drinks, so you take your wallet with you, and in your wallet you put your front door key. 
Now, when you get back home at the end of the day, uh, returning from the festival, you want to open your front door and your wallet is not there anymore. But you have no clue when it was lost. So obviously you knew when going out there that there are probably pickpockets. However, you don't know who in the full crowd of people was the pickpocket or maybe there were multiple. And you also don't know when it was taken away from you. Was it directly after you bought some drinks? Was it in the bus back home? Did you just lose your wallet or was it actually stolen? That is really difficult to find out, which is often the, the problem uh, with mage card scammers as well. So like I said, there are different scammers. Uh, one of them is the Radix scammer, which uh, Sunsec first wrote about in March 2019. Uh, my own blog followed a few days later, but they are the first to publicly write about this. And then you also have the Ant and Cockroach skimmer, uh, which is written about in detail by RiskIQ a few days prior to this talk, both of which are linked. Uh, lastly, the skimmer I mainly encountered during my research, I named C. My main intention here was because I wanted to look into the victims, uh, so the affected websites and not necessarily the skimmer themselves. I didn't dig into the skimmer, uh, this skimmer and, and try to find out if it was already named and known or if this was a new one. So I just kept it as C for this talk, but there are three that I mainly looked at. Uh, the radix skimmer will be covered, uh, the loading part will be covered in a bit. So one of the bigger problems here is the obfuscation of JavaScript. It's a really versatile language. You can do a lot with it. However, uh, if you have minimized code, you will also see this in a lot of legitimate places. Additionally, you have a open source uh, obfuscator called Obfuscator IO, which can well, obfuscate your code, obviously. Um, and this is, uh, this is also used by legitimate applications. So even if you were to scan uh, whatever is happening out there, then it becomes really difficult to find which part is used and which part isn't uh, by criminal actors. Sometimes they add their code to legitimate libraries, sometimes they keep it as is. So I tackled this issue by creating a private scanner and a private deobfuscator for uh, some of the JavaScript things that I encountered. Uh, this will remain private due to the lack of code quality. Uh, however, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, message me personally and uh, we'll see if I can work something out for you. So this is a screenshot of the uh, cleaned Radix loader. As you can see, uh, a new div is created on a website, or on a page, I should say. Uh, and then you can see that it has all variables that are being added. Uh, uh, they have three characters in length, these variables. Uh, and then in the end, you have uh, the decryption of sorts. So it basically tries to uh, use a specific radix to convert the garbage that is put up front into the actual skimmer, uh, skimmer which is then loaded. So the radix here is also the reason why the skimmer is named this way because the radix can change. So uh, in this screenshot, it's, for, uh, it's radix 36, but you can also have different radixes to, with the same loader. So it's, it's hard to necessarily uh, find out any real reoccurring patterns in here uh, as also the names such as inner HTML, append child, etc., are also obfuscated. So that's why I said this is a clean version. Afterwards, it does an integrity check to see if everything went okay, and only then the actual skimmer is present on the uh, on the website. So tracking campaigns uh, is difficult, and as I mentioned before, keep the festival analogy in mind. Now, uh, one thing that comes to mind on how to best explain how to track campaigns is to mention the song by Fleetwood Mac uh, in which they have the, uh, the line, never break the chain. Now, if you were to keep track of an actor's steps and you want to follow them live, then you would have to stay on top of the research, as is with any research. But the moment you lose the skimmer on one website or they change something that doesn't link back, it becomes much harder because you can use the latest website to check which one is next. Uh, by cross-referencing the exfiltration point. However, if you lose track of this, then you break the chain uh, and it becomes really hard. So uh, think of following somebody in a crowd and you look away for a few seconds, just close your eyes for five seconds. Uh, you will have a really hard time finding this person even if you are able to find this person. So 
uh, the chain, what am I talking about here? Let me visualize this a bit more. So you have basically three options that I displayed in two graphics. Uh, one is on the left side, one is on the right side. So the left side is there's malicious JavaScript on the affected website. This can be in version one local, so the uh, malicious JavaScript is present on the hosting of the specific infected site, but it can also be external, so you can put a piece of JavaScript somewhere and then link to it from site A. What you can also do is in fact a uh, CDN, content delivery network. So by putting the skimmer on there, you'll immediately affect a lot of websites that are out there. And since the skimmer only activates with specific keywords in the URL, like uh, checkout, then uh, it doesn't activate on websites that are not a web shop, but it does activate on web shops. So this is favorable for the criminal, uh, but in a sense it's also favorable for the researcher because having a uh, infected CDN makes it much, much more likely that at least somebody will notice and tweet about it uh, or research it by themselves and then find out that this is ongoing. However, by infecting a CDN, you're also infecting usually uh, more high value targets. So that's where it becomes a bit of a, um, a gray area as it what is the most beneficial for researchers. Whereas obviously the most beneficial is that people would stop doing criminal activity. Uh, but alas, I don't foresee that happen. Uh, so tracking campaigns, uh, in the beginning I worked together with ja uh, Jacob Pimental. Um, on the 20th of January he uh, found a, a website uh, that had a skimmer on it and uh, he asked me for help so we dug into it together. And we found that a website that was reselling tickets uh, was infected. And then we used this exfiltration domain to find more. Uh, and then uh, RiskIQ uh, also blogged about uh, the findings that we had and elaborated more on this with their research. And we elaborated on their research again. Then on the 24th of February, I wrote a blog by myself uh, about more details that I found. And after that, I wanted to see how far the reach was of this, uh, this group thus far. So I started backtracking. So instead of following the live activities, I went back in time uh, and I found websites that were infected roughly until two years ago uh, at the time of writing, which was earlier this year. So the result of that analysis, so this is the, the, the backtracking part, uh, it had 1,236 uh, affected websites, and I split them into multiple groups. Now, notably, the products group is the biggest, which also makes the most sense. Uh, in the example I gave a t-shirt, it's something you can order with a credit card or a new gaming console or hardware or any of the other things that you might need. However, services as well as food are generally uh, not ordered with a credit card. Especially services, you require a bit of negotiation and talking about what the party can provide for you, what you need. So it's not like a, a, a shopping basket on a, a web shop where you just order a service and go. Uh, roughly 10% was unknown. I, I couldn't find anything about these websites, but I knew they had been infected at some point in time, but they might have been down at that point. And I want to have a specific mention of the adult entertainment websites that were uh, infected, because like I said, you also provide usually your uh, address uh, where you live, your full name aside from your credit card credentials. All this information is uh, exfiltrated by the skimmer, meaning this information is somewhere, but not in all places on the, in the world. It's legal to uh, have a relationship with somebody of a specific gender, uh, depending on the gender you have. So uh, this is additionally a vector for them to be vulnerable, which is why I want to mention it separately. If we look at the geographical location, I looked at the headquarters of each affected company, uh, which was a tedious task to do manually, uh, but I wanted to have a reliable data set. Now, if we can see here, uh, then we see that a lot of countries across the world have been affected, uh, and we see that by far the darkest spot on the map, meaning it's the most impacted, is the United States of America, uh, with 303 infections. Now, this is also uh, logical on the one hand, because the United States have a tendency to do a lot with their credit cards. They buy a lot with credit cards. So it makes more sense to, from an attacker's perspective, to target a uh, United States web shop because you have the most chance. So if I compare that with the Netherlands, uh, we mostly use debit cards, so it, it doesn't really make too much sense to 
uh, start hosting credit card skimmers here. Uh, however, we also have to take into account that this data is not normalized. So the United States has a population of more than 300 million, uh, whereas the Netherlands only has 17 million. So logically, they will have more affected websites as well. Now, lastly, I want to talk a bit about the economic implications that there are. So you basically have four groups of uh, people that are affected by fraud. So you have the actor who purely aims to make profit. Uh, by doing this. Then you have the individual, it can be you or me, whoever owns a credit card, uh, they lose money because of this. Then you have the, the bank, which uh, has the credit cards, and they want to avoid fraud and, and combat this as well. And lastly, you have the merchant, who is the web shop. And the web shop obviously has to make sure their security is in order. So as a report by MasterCard said, 77% of the cases they investigate, the merchant had not uh, kept their software secure and up-to-date. This means that uh, they have a lack of security and this can also mean that they are fined for all of the fraudulent transactions that took place, uh, going as far as bankrupting them in case of smaller companies. And in case of uh, bigger companies, you can get fines. So recent fines were uh, the 20 million pound fine for British Airways and the 1.25 pound fine, uh, 1.25 million pound fine uh, for Ticketmaster. Lastly, I want to talk a bit about the indirect collaboration. Uh, all of the sources mentioned are based on the first I could find, uh, and I do disregard private data sets. I specifically want to talk uh, Willem, uh, Jordan, and Jonathan for their help with answering my questions uh, and other help they've given me. I also want to thank Jerome specifically, as well as Jacob and Ophir for helping me out uh, with research and also with reviewing the material. If there are any questions, you can ask them in the chat and uh, I'll get back to you.